Anna, Frost, Cure, and Black, how are you, my friend? There are not enough zippers for us to even qualify for Final Fantasy characters. Not yet, not yet. But before the game gets underway, let's take a look at the contenders we have here today. Starting in the blue corner, representing Team Fire, it is Japan. In the top lane, it will be Evi from Seventh Heaven, Jungle, Tussle from Rampage, Seros on Detonation Focus Me, Hereti from Unsold Stuff Gaming, and his support, Dara on Rampage. And on the red side of the rift for Team Ice, the Oceanic All-Stars. Of course, we just actually saw them on your uh, your screen right there, but we'll get it fixed. It's in the top lane. It's going to be uh, Swiper from the Chiefs Esports. In the jungle, Carbon representing Legacy Esports. Mid, it's another Chief member from Swiffer. And then AD Carry in support, it's the old duo, Radier and Rosie from the Dire Wolves and Tainted Minds. I can't remember if they said this on the analyst desk, but Radier is now a lawyer. He uh, stopped and moved away from League of Legends. He's kind of like an upper platform player, diamond player, but he's now a lawyer. This game writes itself. He's playing against a Japanese team. You know what I'm going to be calling out as we get into game. I'm not going to spoil it. You guys know anyway. Oh, God. <laughs> you yeah. signed up for this. I definitely did with full. See, the thing is, is we actually, uh, the casters pick and which games we pick, it kind of depends. So, you know, if you want to do the uh, the Oceanic games, you actually have to wrestle an alligator. And then whoever uh -huh. successfully does that gets to cast the Oceanic games. But for the Japanese games, we're like, let's do a Beyblade arena fight and pull stuff that he's like, Beyblade arena, I'm ready. I'm in. And I bodied everyone, and that's why I'm here right now with Rosco, and that's how it all came together. But I'm really excited to watch this matchup. I mean, just in terms of player stories as well, Japan is just a crazy team. You've got Evi in the top lane. He was on a team that was basically made to be the hitman of their league and just take out the top. Uh, very popular, very, very well respected. It was funny, you know, when the players were getting into the room, the, uh, the Oceanic team was talking a little bit of trash, like, oh, we're going to ice you and things like that, because obviously they're representing Team Ice. Uh -huh. Meanwhile, the Japanese players get in, they're like, how? fun it's okay like exclamation point exclamation point just very adorable across the board but you know we did mention that there were rivalries on the oceanic team there's also rivalries happening on the japanese team as well again it's a mixture of three different teams uh, you got rampage you got usg uh, as well as seventh heaven there so it's not all cohesive sunshine and rainbows on either side uh japan coming into this you know the players said that we're very uh proud we were very surprised that we got selected for this for their individual roles and they're just here to make an impact and a splash the region recently has had a lot of money flowing into it to try to level up the structure and the support, you know, get them towards more of like what's been established as the standard in the power regions. And so making an impact here would really congratulate all of that success they've put back home domestically. I mean, they haven't had like the best performances, of course, when you've looked at previous IWC tournaments. But when you look at the lineup, talking about money being injected into them, we'll get onto that topic later. But we do have those Korean imports, of course, uh, Tussle and Dara. So keep an eye out for them. But we are into Champion Select here, Japan taking on Oceania. And it will be Karma as the first band here, followed by that Syndra aimed at the mid lane of Seraph. So we started to see a bit of trends happening over the first two games. We're starting to see that bleed into this third game now for the day. And it's always going to be a question, you know, what is the meta going to look like? A lot of Syndra and a lot of Karma either priority pick and ban, although suddenly things are starting to diverge. Indeed they are. Kennen and a Blanc band away here, followed by Jace as well. So taking a little bit from the world meta, Oceanic following that train of thought. And we have to recognize that Swiper and the Oceanic uh, team, the Chiefs, did recently play at I Am, and Swiper was picking up that Kennen, so definitely a lot of respect going there from Abby. We're waiting for that final ban, which will be locked in by OCE, and that will be the rise. So a lot aimed towards Seros here as one of their star players on the lineup. Yeah, that's going to be three bans for the jungle as well as two for the top lane, which means that the, uh, excuse me, mid lane and the top lane, which means that the jungle pool is completely wide open. We've seen Lee Sen hit the bench a couple of times, Ivern played or hit, and it's actually not going to be a jungle priority because you have so many options available. And from what we've seen earlier today, we know that mini meta is starting to evolve. We're seeing uh, Courage of the Colossus, of course, be a massive factor as we're getting into this tournament so far. Can definitely take over a game. I know Frost, you're patting me on the shoulder because it's triggering me a little bit. I'm like, oh boy, we get to see assassins and crazy stuff and no, four times every game. No, I see backstage, Pulse, you were saying, oh, you know, I really always wanted to cast an Alawi game. And I was like, you should have come to the OPL because Swiper is a huge Alawi player. Um, I don't know if he's going to connect on it and lock it in, but it's definitely a pocket pick for him. Oh, I'm looking forward to it, but what has been locked in for certain is the Japanese lineup locking in the Ash for the ADC. So giving Hereti what he wants to start on this one off. 
Yeah, and uh, you know, we saw priority from Jin last match when the Ash was available, so it, it still kind of goes back, but we're still seeing more of the utility carries um, be the focus for this tournament, although Vayne was targeted out a bit in the band, so kind of curious. Again, Heredi, one of the more newer members on this lineup. He's kind of here by uh, proxy. He wasn't initially the first choice, so again, very happy, very honored to represent his region here. We have that response now from OCE, Wolby, Bard, and Lee Sin picked up there for Carboss himself. So I was talking to Carbon the other day, and he was saying that for Oceania so far in scrims, that uh, Lee Sin is going to be their go-to, so no surprise to see him prioritize that very early in their first game. Uh, it's really about the gank power. So again, the jungle timers were changed 100 to 150 seconds, which means you have much wider windows to actually be proactive in those gank paths. And being one of the best ganking champions alongside Elise is that Lee Sin. There was a part of me that was fearing maybe a Nunu lock-in from Carboni, but because Nunu, of course, can't proc off uh, Courage of the Colossus, down a little in priority, even though I know that he likes to go to that champion to make people suffer. Uh, Olaf and Nautilus being locked in here as well. Nautilus, we saw earlier in the day, just strong at the moment with that mastery. Yeah, just Courage of the Colossus all day. The fact that he's able to get that off with his auto attack is uh, pretty ridiculous since there's so much CC riddled throughout his kit. I'm liking to see Olaf kind of return back. The thing is, he was slowed down a little bit. One of his big things is he has great dueling potential and he jungles very quickly. Uh, obviously, again, with the jungle timers being changed around, he, he loses a bit of priority there, but we'll see what Tussle can do with him. Bit of a change up from OCE. Poppy, nothing to write home about, but the vein now coming in, and we have been seeing from people and hearing whispers of the hyper carries in the ADC role really coming back into uh, priority. Uh, all I've learned from Ray Deer, because he's been playing League of Legends again for maybe two, three weeks now, I was like, what do you think of the new patch? He's like, Vayne is fun. So there we go, putting his money where his mouth is. Hasn't played for like months, is now a lawyer. He's like most mechanically intensive AD carry. Get me in there. Look, man, I just need to pick up one kill so I can say my line. That's all I need. And there's the lock-in of Valkars coming in there for the <laughs> Japanese lineup. I know if uh, Alawi was locked in, we'd have a very different cast here, but Valkars su suits the bill as well here, Frosk. That was too, too easy. Uh, no, so Seros is known as an innovator in Japan. He said that he had some sneaky picks. In fact, Japan was alluding before this tournament that they had some sneaky strategies. Uh, they have a very interesting and unique meta, so no surprise to kind of see Seros go a little bit on the unbeaten path, although we have seen a Velkaz recently again at that IAM. Um, but otherwise, pretty standard picks across the board outside that mid. Unclogging the frog as well with Tam Kench. And as you were talking about, like, Saros is that innovator. If you followed him at all, you will have known that he used to be that big zillion player. And this is what's cool is because Zeros, or Seros is known as the faker of Japan. He is their premier mid laner. Recently got a bit of competition with Roki coming up through the league. So it's kind of the first time that Seros had to really return to form. And it's explosive in this matchup in particular, because if you're looking at Seros on Team Fire, you need to look at Swiffer on Team Ice. Now has the victor in his, last po or in his pocket for that last pick. And he is the best performing player in Oceania right now. So these two mid laners are going in for a clash. They're going to duke it out. And we'll see how the junglers also get involved in that action, but the last pickup was Victor coming into the mid lane. So Victor versus Velko is not something I was expecting to see in this tournament, but there we have it. I mean, that's pretty much just going to be wave clearing back and back. But again, it's the impact that these two players can make for their team, especially when we get to these big 5v5s. They have the potential to turn games around, and they've both stepped up and shown that they are the best performing players in their regions. All right, Frost, well, we have the full lineups now, so we can actually see the full composition. So where are these teams looking to hit home outside of the laning phase? I mean, obviously, we've got a Vayne sitting on Oceania. You have to give respect to that. Courage of the Colossus is, is running crazy right now. Vayne doesn't really care about any of these shields. She's going to go for the true damage, she's going to shred you down. On the other side, I think it's all about kind of that tricky Velkaz. You know, what are you going to be able to execute speaking of true damage? Yeah, taking them out with that geometry, but we'll see how that one works out. We need you guys to uh, tag in at home as well. Use the hashtag JPNWin or the hashtag OCEWin. Tweet that one to at LOL Esports. We'll be checking in on what you think about these lineups, the team, and how this game will go. I'm certainly very excited to see how this one all pans and turns out. Very interesting players, very interesting stories, and a great match as well. It's always a joy to see Japan versus Oceania. I'm not going to call it a rivalry, but there's been multiple international events where uh, Japan has kind of been the thorn in Oceania's side, just kind of cutting them down at the very last step before international glory. So they can do it again today. We'll be getting into game very soon. Ladies and gentlemen, you can see all of the players on your screen getting ready to hit the rift here for our third game of the day. And we are now into game. Fire Eyes going toe-to-toe -to -toe once again with Japan against Oceania.
we were one super galaxy rumble skin away from a Pacific Rim. And I'm really disappointed. We were close, Frosk, but we'll have to see if, of course, the jungle and mid lane synergy is drift compatible as we get into game here. And we'll be finding that over the first couple of minutes. So what's unique to me in the jungle changes is how the level one vision game has changed. So we saw at Worlds it kind of changed from deep vision to scouting vision because it was more about prioritizing your vision to secure your lane matchups, making sure that you got control of the incoming creep wave as opposed to finding the enemy jungler's start path. It's kind of now reverted back to deep vision, or at least collective five, just because most junglers are starting their buffs. Now, Team Ice do have an advantage here, and that they know for sure that Olaf's going to be starting his blue buff, because that's what Olaf needs. He's very dependent on the blue to do his jungle quickly. Uh, in response, Carbon is making the choice to also start the same side of the map. It's fairly common to start the top side of the map, but... He did have the opportunity that he could have mixed it up, that he could have created windows where the junglers would be on opposite sides to open up different ganking paths. It's so very interesting now as well of all the camps changing, the time is changing even, like bot lane can't even get involved in taking those camps or taking that level one or even helping the jungler. It's all about getting to that lane first in those long lanes. And this definitely does mean that Bard becomes stronger just because, as Kreppo likes to say, he's one of the strongest champions level one due to his meeps. And the longer that you're at level one, the more punishing Bard can be. We'll see if Courage of the Colossus as well as that Ignite on Nautilus can compensate for it. Because again, we haven't even mentioned, Kench went to the top lane. That's very true. Ebby's going to be bringing it up there. Uh, Ebby, a play on Ebby as a shrimp, so he's playing the marine life coming into this one. And we've really hyped up Ebby, you know, uh, 500 LP challenger on Korean server. That's not something that's easy to do by any means. Oh, yeah. He also does it playing from Japan with 80 ping. Mm -hmm. So, you know, everyone else is sitting in uh, Korea and you're know, like 7, oh, 8 like, ping. Yeah, like a single digit ping. Um, but on the other side of that, Dara also has a ton of respect. He's considered the best support in the region. Uh, the desk was talking about his synergy with the jungler Tussler because they're from the same team Rampage. And so it's really kind of a combination of how are this Olaf and this Nautilus going to connect and start exploiting ice, especially in this bot lane. They have so many tools to do it. You've got so much CC riddled through Nautilus's kit. You have the Asher at level six, and it completely compensates for the lack of CC on Olaf's kit. And Ray Deer, he's, uh, he's just trying to play the farm game right now. He's like, look, guys, I've been a lawyer for the last couple of months. Just let me farm. Let me just play Vayne, and I'll get to late game, and I'll kill all of you. Let me even back it up farther. Look, guys, I'm Ray Deer. I sit in my lane. <laughs> I farm. I play the hyper carry. This was Ray Deer's MO even before he went into retirement. The thing is, is the Chiefs used to understand, get Ray Deer to late game. He'll make the hero play. He got a pentakill uh, when he did take down Legacy kind of the last time we saw him. So the expectation, he's a 5v5 AD carry. He's not a laning AD carry. How much faith is there now, though, after having taken such a hiatus from the game and now coming back? They're clearly still some faith because they've given him that vein, but is it then putting that burden on Swiffer in the mid lane and saying, hey, if this vein doesn't work out, we'll just bring someone else to the table who can also blow up the whole enemy team? I think the burden is actually on Carbon, particularly because he is that least in pick because the jungler is still very important in setting the tempo of this game. And it's really all eyes on Carboss here uh, as kind of the captain and shot caller to dictate the flow and kind of compensate for the fact that, you know, Swiffer's just, it's going to be ping pong back in the mid lane. I'm going to push it in, you're going to push it back. Radier's going to be down there, he's going to be free farming. Swiper's up here on Poppy. All eyes are on this Lee Sin if the Chiefs want to get something going early. We'll see if that is the case. And Swiffer, he's got that early uh, blue buff actually coming in from Carl Bradoodle. So he's actually given that one over to his victor in the mid lane. You just change it up his nickname every time. Car Doodle. Yeah. Car Boss. Don't Car worry, I've got, a, I've got a zillion of them. But we have Olaf coming into the top lane. Tussle looking for some blood. Swiper, he's going to use them to uh, jump back to his tower, so he's not going to be in bad shape at all. Of course, very difficult to gank a copy from directly behind. And frankly, that's a big win for Os across the board. The fact that you did burn the ghost uh, on the Olaf and didn't exchange any of your summoners because you did use that uh, charge to reposition yourself back to safety. See what Tussle does with it, and if he will have that cooldown depending on how quickly he gets to level six. Because obviously Ragnarok is really dependent on Ghost, and if it's delayed, although he is level four, so he might have a big enough window on it, it could also delay that power spike even further. Yeah. Great thing about Ghost, pretty short cooldown compared to the rest of the mobility spells. Um, and Swiffer is just dodging out the geometry being thrown at him from Seraph, but there is Carbon coming into the mid lane, looking to put some hurt on to Velkars, but Seraph will back off to his tower, just be shoved in a little bit, fairly even as that laser comes in and evens up the playing field.
Yep, and another ghost down, and with the pressure in mid lane, Carbon then immediately transfers pressure into the jungle, laying down Deep Vision and teaming up with Rosie. And this is the next player that I want to highlight. Rosie is incredibly aggressive. He's a known bard player. He likes to play playmaking supports, and he has been known in competitive matches to play static shiv bard. Don't think we're going to see it today, but that's pretty much the essence of Rosie. This guy likes to kill people. Pretty sure he builds a rapid fire cannon as well. Uh, that's another staple of, uh, of his, and, which that's I think rude. is fantastic. That is very rude, actually, but which is fantastic because one punch bard for you guys who uh, at home maybe don't know, you just go all on hit. You walk around, you hit someone once, you do a lot of damage. You may not kill them, but it's fun. And Rosie loves that. So just hopefully we'll see him. <laughs> hopefully we'll see him do that this game because he has started off with the spell feast edge, which is uh, part of the core cool build. Hmm. I know a lot of cheese for us, Kieran. I can tell. <laughs> Me and Spawn have that in common. Uh, get out of here, creeps. That is unfortunate. Just wanted to punt Evie away from the minions. Try and deny a, a couple there, but... He's got his dancing shoes on. Tam Kench, ready in the top lane. No, but Carbon is actually hanging around the area. So, uh, again, the Chiefs made a, a big effort to place a lot of vision over the bottom side of the jungle. That vision has now lifted, which is why Seras has actually snuck in here. Now, he will appear in the river because there is a fairly shallow ice ward, and Hook doesn't connect, which means that this play now fizzles out. I was very interested in uh, just the plants as well, and also how that affects top laners, because we've spoken a bunch about like the revealing uh, power um, and as well as the blast cones or the popcorn, as uh, Atlas put it, but how the top laners will really aggress over those. And because this isn't like a super volatile matchup, then controlling the uh, the plant doesn't matter that much. But in a in an aggressive matchup where you can just push out the wave, and there's no jungler presence, and you can really make an impact. So a topic for another time when we have. Uh, a matchup that will really get involved. I was going to say, speaking of volatile, what Swiffer is doing with Fog of War uh, and kind of taunting Saras on, on the top side of the map is fairly volatile, as Ice or Oceania are now kind of looking to contest this blue buff. Although, here we go. Life form disintegration. Oh, 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 oh. oh, he'll fall over. That's first blood going to Saras. Okay, so Saras is not playing that game. Swiffer was a little bit cheeky, playing with the Fog of War, just kind of baiting him. You know we want this blue buff. Saras sits in the mid lane, pushes the way forward, forces Swiffer to come back and respond, and then just goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the solo kill. We said that this was going to be explosive, then we saw the control mages come in. I was like, ah, you know, maybe we'll back up a lot, pop the uh, pop the brakes, but Saras is like, no. No, he gave him the tentacles there for sure, Frost, and now he's in a pretty good shape. We'll pick up this blue buff most uh, likely, and then head on back to base, pick up a couple items, put Swiffer further behind. Eight minutes into the game, now with that first blood. Uh, in terms of actual gold, has not really... Uh, made a, a big divide between the two teams. There's a slight CS advantage in the top lane uh, with that poppy there. But Saras is actually going to stick around and carry on clearing. No, the most important thing and the big thing on the map right now is Swiffer not having his flash. The fact that Saras made that look easy, didn't have to expend any of his summoners, just really uh, lasered down uh, Swiffer, that can be punished again. So now it's about how will Saras control the creep wave, try to pull Swiffer out from hiding, and try to continue to punish that. So. Taking another look, this is really just this laser reaching across the entire lane. Managed to hit every single oh, one of geez. his abilities and just blows him up. He was like pretty much full health as well. Like you go against the Velcos, like ah, maybe his like kill pressure is like uh, 50, 60 percent. Nope, you're at 90 percent. And Velcos he took you out. is pretty excellent at you know shredding through teams despite whatever their tanky makeup will be. So you know. Japan, obviously recognizing the strength of the possible Courage of the Colossus yep. compositions and having this pocket pick available. True damage, we got true damage. Nice vein. Dara, happy to clear out this ward in the bottom lane. Had that control ward ready to go. And Carbos will uh, give over this blue as well to Swiffer. What becomes scary right now is that bot lane is now level six. So you have Swiffer, who's in a, an incredibly dangerous situation, not having a summoner bid. Although, as I say that, now we're looking top. <laughs> yeah, wet noodle fight for the most part. He uh, was close. He tried to get him under the tower. It is. There we go. He's We've not got done. Another stack. No, he's still Slap going. Slap him. And that's going to force the knockback in from Swiper. So, did get the ultimate out there just but by being a douchebag. This does just emphasize, though, kind of the, uh, the disgusting situation that the Chiefs find themselves in. The mid lane right now is, is pretty much done until Swiffer gets his flashback. He's in a, a very precarious situation. It's going to force Carbon to hang around to babysit, hold his hand, which means that no one is there to help bottom lane like this. Man, that 
Oh, the CC chain is brutal. Rosie's going to give himself a Zonius. Looks for the lockdown, but Tuttle's having none of it. There's the Ragnarok. Tuttle will bite the dust. And Raider, he's trying to get out of there. Carbos coming down along with Swiffer, looking to reinforce the front lines. Already goes down. And Swiper still trying to get involved in this fight, but Evie is the one under attack. Here comes Seros. Lasers down Lee Sin. And that will be resulting in a two for two. We're maybe looking for more. Dara setting up the kill onto Swiffer. Goodbye. That's the double kill for the Valkos in the mid lane. And finally, everyone gets involved and they're able to exploit the small advantages that they had created in the other lane. So great idea from Japan. The execution could have been cleaned up a little bit in terms of their target selection, especially with the limited CC that they had. But overall, a victory for them. We're going to see it once more here, Frosk. So this is what I was saying. The fact that Carbon has to respond to the mid lane means that Fire know that they have this opportunity. If Lee Sin has to babysit Victor, we have the, all of the ultimates in the bottom lane. Let's exploit them. So I love the initial decision making here. And then again, it's just kind of the CC, how far that they chase, and the fact that they didn't instantaneously blow someone up with their big important cooldowns. I really would have liked Swiper to come in maybe a fraction of a second earlier because the Bard ultimate goes on top of himself. And he's just like, I want to buy some time for Poppy to come in. But by then, it was too late. Tentacle Monster comes in from the mid lane. And Dara just sets up a nice last kill into Swiffer. If he dodges that, Ray Deer dies. So took a bullet for the main man. And double kill over to Valkos there. So 3-0-0. Got the Morel in Armacon. A Dragon as well. They're running mid. Hold on, Saros. How is he going to do? Carbon. Land Doesn't have flash, so he can't go in to try to insect him off the, the tower. Flash, yeah. Tussle getting caught up by Swiper. That's going to force the Ragnarok. And Resonating Strike will not connect onto Olaf as he backs away. But uh, I almost called them the Chiefs. The Oceanic Squad <laughs> not slowing down. Immediately get back onto the field, secure that Dragon. And that's two attempted ganks right now, and now a scuffle in top. Well, this is going to be another long one, but from uh, previous indifferences, we'll have seen the Tam Kench get ahead. And Lee Sin was looking to get involved there, but everyone backs away. Okay, everything should calm now. Tussle now needs to take back control. Preferably cleared his jungle because he's got a lot of uh, oceanic vision behind him. So he should be uh, spotted out by Swiffer. You would assume so. It's also why uh, Radier and Rosie are playing so defensively right now. So this is actually important. Positioning. So you notice how Rosie and Radier are sitting behind the tower? It's because they're against the Nautilus. Obviously, unlike the Blitzcrank and the Thresh, who can throw the hook and go through the turret, uh, Nautilus's hook will connect with the structure. So anytime you're facing a Nautilus, just cower behind Matt. It'll yep. protect you so he can't look for the easy dive because he is tanky enough to do it. Words of wisdom, also against Graves as well, because he just literally can't hit you. Here comes Carbos into the mid lane once oh, again. Oh, he missed it. Yeah, Saros will get away with his life. Does uh, go down to half, though, because that's the warrior enchant from Carbon, so he's in pretty good shape when it comes to damage. And Tussle and Dara will tag team the crab. He'll be going down, and Carbos will use this opportunity to take away the blue buff as Swiper comes down as well to assist him. Uh, Evie. He wants a piece of this pie, but I don't think he's getting get in range with limited assistance from his mid lane and jungler. Give him a lick. Tastes just like Poppy. Uh, Japan have put all of their eggs kind of in this bottom side basket. So in response of losing their blue buff, they're actually going to attempt to dive here or at least get pressure on the tower, possibly look for first brick. Here comes the arrow. Right through the goal. Uh, Rosie, pretty happy with that result. We say the wickets in Australia. The wickets? All right, got you. I'm going <laughs> to have to adapt to that one. Oh, but just misses the wall. If yeah. that had connected... Or anyone behind him. There was a good sidestep at the end there. Seros getting kicked back to safety. Will oh, he's ticking down. Nah, he's good. He's good. Oh, he's the good. creeps. Changed yeah. aggro to the tower. Again, Carbon not having his flash, so just trying to uh, brute force the damage with the red buff. Still going to send him back to base. Tussle wants to do the same thing. Flash, hug from Dara. CC chain. Tussle takes out his counterpart. Oh, hold on, not Swiffer. over yet. He's staying around. He pops the ultimate. He's forcing the Nautilus back, but uh, he's playing with some fire. But there we go. There's the Rampage members, Dara and Tussle, together again. And you can see that clear communication. The fact that the Ragnarok comes down, Dara's like, I got you, immediately flashes to set him up for the kill. Very impressive stuff. Five to two in total here. Fire taking the reins on this game so far against Ice. Just 2,000 gold ahead. But of course, Ice did get that, um, that speedy dragon, the cloud dragon, of course. And they will... Just be playing out the rest of this game here. 
Um, where is the gold just to be? Well, Seros is massive, uh, so that's a thing. And <laughs> the Vel'Kars is big. Yeah, I mean, that's what we expected coming into the matchup, right? It's just like, it's going to be a lot about this mid lane, how Seros stacks up against Swiffer and how they get into those late game team fights. We are going to actually take another look at that replay, though. And again, it's as soon as the Ragnarok is, like, look at how far back Dar uh, Dara was when the Ragnarok was proc. The communication of, I'm going to flash this wall, I can get him. Trust me, use that big cooldown. We're going to find you a kill. And that he did in the end. Flash from Rosie doesn't connect onto a wall. Weird angle there. Radiant coming in once again. Carbon is here to assist. Heresi putting down the damage he can. There's the flash kick that we're all looking for. And that will be Radier picking up that first kill of the game for himself. Radier going for this one-on-one -on -one trade. I'm not even trying this is going to go, but everyone is behind him to assist. And Seros, he was just buying time. You've activated my trap card. And Radier trying to get away, but not going to be so lucky. Down for the count. And Twiffer, meanwhile, takes out Tosso in the top lane. It's a feast in bottom lane as Tam Kench finds another. Just absolutely dunked right there. Gobbles up Carbon, spikes him on the ground to pick up the kill, as well as the tower. Huge swing for Japan. Eight and four now. Swiffer taking the opportunity to chunk the middle tower, but will not be able to take this one away as this minion wave is dissipating. Big swing here, as you mentioned, for us. Uh, yeah, and that was all on the back of Radio. You know, we said this guy's a retired player. He's now a lawyer. He hasn't played League of Legends in quite a minute, and uh -huh. you can clearly see right there that was strictly a mechanical error. Uh, step forward, didn't respect the, the space that Ash had, and you could almost see. Saras is just kind uh, of he's like dead. chilling. Yeah, uh, <laughs> see you later. And that'll be the shutdown. He uh, he put himself in between the wall and the turret. Yes. Small space, nowhere to escape. Speaking uh, of not respecting your uh, your opponent. Respect the disco ball. We were saying that as soon as the changes came to Victor Ultimate, it's just like, that hurts a lot. You should get out of there. Unfortunately, did not respect, but that'll be a kill back over to the mid laner. And we'll see this bottom lane tussle once again. I mean, all eyes really need to be on radio. Carbon plays this immaculately to set it up, especially with the flash kick right about here and right again about, you can start yeah. the animation and in the middle of the animation you can apply your flash put yourself on the other side and change the trajectory uh this right here this is uh am i am i escaping guys miscommunication not knowing your limits not keeping track of the mid laner this is classic radio and bard pays for it with his life and as does radio himself and tussle was uh, just being run down up there this is my favorite moment though Whoop. learn your place it's on Get the ground <laughs> on the on the floor and Japan really putting it to OCE right now. Here comes the next dragon, will be Infernal. This and is... Carbon's actually in place to take this with Radia. Very risky, however. Uh, the Ash Arrow is back up. If I'm Japan, I'm pulling the trigger on this. I'm taking this fight 100%. Well, Toso's being chunked out. Here Instantly comes the arrow. The trigger. There's a hook onto Radia. He's shut down. Carbon takes out Seros off to the side. There's the Bard ultimate. Toso falling down after Carbon. He finds one. He's onto Swiffer. Doesn't connect the Q. Meanwhile, Rosie being chased down by Dara and Heredi. Trying to get out of range. The Sunfire will finish him off. And Swiper looking for another kill onto Dara. This has turned into a fiesta. It's all tanks. And now Swiffer coming in. He wants something, but there's He's only so tanks. Scared. Oh, there's the hook. He's managed to dodge it. You can go back in. The hook's down. The Q's coming out from Rosie. He's trying to do everything he can, but he's just a Bard. And Dara. He's good to go. Okay, that 100% should have been Japan's fight, but they made one crucial error, and it was Seros's positioning in the mid lane, stuck between a rock and a hard place and just got obliterated. Plus the fact that Evie didn't have his teleport or the Tom Kench ultimate, but it was just about to come up. So Japan, all they needed to do was be patient. They could have then met the 5v5. Unfortunately, Poppy's teleport came in earlier, and they put themselves at a disadvantaged situation when that was their fight to win. All right, I'm trying to figure out what's going on right now as the Tam Kench is flanking. He's dead. the knockup and uh, diagnosis, Swiffer dead. Yeah. Time of death, 18 minutes, 52 seconds. <laughs> that, that is what happened. There we go, contesting Raptors. Get out of there, Carbon. He's got the ward top. He's, he's good, but now the mid lane push is coming in for fire. They have the minion wave also there and the entire lineup. There's the hook onto Carbon. Just needs to hide behind the tower and he's dead before he can get back to his team. Safeguard was down and as is Carbon, mid tower will be soon to follow and the siege will continue. The problem is, is that without their victor, they have no wave clear. You look at Vayne, she's just got an infinity edge in the bank. There's no way that they can safely approach this tower, especially with the reach and oppression of Belkaz on it. So this is going to be two structures for free, simply because Swiffer was caught overextended. Two towers. Another swing here for Team Fire and the Japanese lineup. 
and they were just going to stroll through the enemy jungle over to the Inferno Dragon, which was not even picked up. So yet another win. And here's the crosswords for Oceania. They can decide, we fight this here because Swiffer has just come off of base. They haven't bought yet and spent the gold of this tower. Or a Riptide will slow down OCE in their tracks. Dara may be the sacrificial Nautilus, but he's going to burn his flash, so he's good. Or the decision would have been to go to the lanes, consolidate the farm, and hang on. Now Oceania are in a very precarious situation. There's just been a ton of gold, as well as the Infernal Drink stacked onto Team Fire. They will get a consolation turret. But for now, again, Japan in full control. They can start setting up their vision control around the Baron. And we're going to look at this mid lane fight that really set off the big swing for Japan. Check out where Saros is. So Tussle gets pushed off. And then Saros is just going to get collapsed on and deleted right between Carbon and Swiffer. The teleport comes in. Swiper here. It's now a big numbers disadvantage in favor of Team Ice. And Tom Kench, if you look at your map, he's now just wandering into the mid lane. If Japan had just been patient by 15 seconds, waiting for that Tom Kench ult to come up so they know that they could have contested for a 5v5 and attacking from the same side. Again, they had the gold lead. They had the, the pressure lead because the tower was down bottom. They connected beautiful arrows. All of that CC, they just didn't execute it well. But let's emphasize this, though. From that last fight, it w was really just like Swiffer being the rock and Carbon's hard plays, just like instantly taking down Seros. The two rivals. The two rivals and... Teaming up. We know that like Seros was going to be a big cornerstone of this matchup, along with Swiffer. And the start, it was just like, got the 1v1 kill. Really good place. He's 6-2-4. and four. He's still in a good place. But when you have so much of that goal just going down the toilet in team fights, that's when problems start to arise. But the problem is, is that Swiffer then immediately overextended and gave the game right back to Japan by taking those two structures and now looking to get more. So the problem is, yes, Seros made a mistake, but I don't think he's going to make that same mistake twice. Yeah, and it's, not now causing, it's not causing the raid wipe, right? Like, it, he's not... Exactly. Yeah. He's good, he's good, guys. Top lane, going to go down to the three-man gank squad from Fire. Be another turret going over to them. 4-2-1 currently, 22 minutes into this game. Heredi clearing out that ward real quick. And Raydeer, he's left to farm all by his lonesome, which is his natural habitat. Raydeer loves that stuff. Tussle will clear away the rest of the wards from the Baron Pit. And Carbon, he's just going to check it with a quick resonating strike over the wall. This is also something that gives a higher priority to Lee Sin, simply because of how the vision game has changed. So now you see the control wards going down on Baron. Again, they deactivate wards that they, or sight wards that they see, Correct. as well as uh, allowing you to see them. So they're incredibly oppressive for Baron, which I think puts Purple Side in a very precarious situation. Because if you actually look at the shape of the map, Going into the Baron Pit from Purple Side, you have to walk through two tiny choke points. And they have a Velkaz, and they have an Ash, and they have a Nautilus. Losing control over that pit, especially for how important that buff is, is going to be the absolute end of Team Ice. But because Lee Sin has the ability to scout the Baron Pit still with his Q, it's like that one shred of hope. Well, I believe in Carbon. I have faith. He can be the shining hope, the shining light of this lineup. He has won 5 and 3 currently, unfortunately. However, if he steals that Baron, he will be the hero that we need and deserve. Here comes the TP into top lane. There's Ice a TP setting up for a play. The return Here TP. Comes Kench. But the Kench is coming in. Dara, he's going to lock down Swiper. Already, he's under attack. But Tam Kench going to gobble him up. Rosie putting some damage down. Carbon, he's going deep. Radiant coming in as well. He's putting down the damage. He's untouched. Dara and Evie only now turning onto the vein. Swiffer coming in for the party. But Evie, he's got the shields. He's ready to go. And Tossel, he has arrived through the bar portal. Oh, there's Poppy going down. And Rosie also going to be sliced and diced by the angry Viking who was coming after him. Victor. I'm not sure he can get away, especially with Tam Kench closing in with the noose. Dara going to be locking up with all this disgusting CC. That went from bad to worse, and that will be the ace for Japan. But I don't think that they can translate it into anything other than resetting their waves. They're not going to immediately go to a Baron. They probably won't be able to t uh, push down a structure, although we'll see how much damage Tussle can do to it. Well, he is half health, so that is theoretically more damage. Yeah, but. so they're just gonna they're actually just gonna reset the wave, making sure that it pushes in, touches the tower, and will bounce back. Now it's about resetting your position and again moving in to control these big monster objectives like the Baron Pit. Oh, he's on the hunt. He's found Olaf. Uh, I'm not sure this is a trade he wants actually. Did he find Olaf or did uh, Olaf find him? We're about to oh find no. out Frost Goal! Does he do it? Carbon, come on. Be a man! What really? <sighs> 
I've seen Carbon go on way more riskier dives, such as the dive they went in top lane. And he didn't go in on Tussle, he had the execute damage. That was montage material waiting to happen. Split second, yeah. the pressure. I mean, he had three seconds of pressure for you, Ross. Like, okay. he had many seconds, many milliseconds. Meanwhile... What's happening here, then? Well, there's the flash, there's the Q, there's the combo. This was the solo kill that we missed <laughs> while the dive was happening. Okay, uh, so now I get to talk about this dive, and I'm actually... The thing is, is this composition from Fire is so tanky that as soon as Radiator is gone, and since Swiffer is solo killing Saros in the mid lane, it, it's over. And the problem is, is that Evie is massive. Tom Kinch pretty much did all of that damage, and it was executed fairly well by Oceania. The fact that Swiper maintained the tower aggro for the entire time, letting Radio just kind of run free. But again, Tom Kinch just gets on the vein, and not only is he ridiculously tanky, he's doing ridiculous amounts of damage. I like the fact that... And then he chases, like, Evie Superstar that fight. Okay, I didn't like that fight, but... What? Hello? That was gorgeous. No, that... no, no, like, everyone being chased down, that was fine. But Ice, going for that dive from the top lane, pulling the trigger, great. But then as soon as Olaf arrived, they stayed in too long and just got run over. There was an attempt there by Fire to uh, try and go for the Baron, but they were... There's no reverse on this crocodile. Like, it only goes forward. Did you know that a crocodile can run forward at, like, 60 miles an hour? Really? No. Oh. I was gonna say, they don't seem like jumps really up fast to 25 feet. animals. <laughs> Do you know any facts about crocodiles, or are you just the troll facts? They only run in straight lines. If a crocodile ever chases you, you're supposed to zigzag. Okay, but then you're pathing back into its like Not zone zigzag of vision, towards right? it. Okay, <laughs> so it assumes it turns. So who's the crocodile in this analogy? Is it fire? It's definitely Kench. Okay, it's, and it's there he goes. He's got Bard. All right, all right, Bard. I'm gonna need some uh, zigzags coming out here. This is perfect. All right, Evie, he's going in a straight line. There's the zig. Can he make the zag happen? Yes, he does. Magical journey. Okay. It's now the Baron <laughs> setup. Thank God they have the cloud dragon, so that way they can escape the crocodile if it does run at them. Covering that. But right now, what Oceania are trying to do is they're trying to force uh, Japan out of the Baron Pit so they can go in and contest the vision, uh, which is why they're shoving down mid. Ooh. That's some dirty wave clear coming mm. in from, uh, from Fire. Pretty much all dispensed by Valkos. Yeah, the communication here was a little bit unclear. They were deciding if they wanted... Oh, hold oh, on. Trying to pull the trigger, but both those triggers miss. And Dara wants out now. That's big, though, because, again, that's kind of a breather. That's a hiatus from all of the pressure that Japan are putting down. Although now it's do or die time. Again, the Oceania runs mid. They're like, they're on the Baron. We need to get them back mid lane. Quick, push it, push it, push it. And Evie's call is like, look, guys, let's just commit on the Baron. They've gone mid lane, but this is going to open up into a fight. Oh, Carbon uses his face as a face checker. They need to get out of here, and they need to retain their health bars. Uh, Ray Deer, not sure if he's subscribing to that right now. He's trying to dodge away. Rosie, Doesn't take one for the team. Oh, that was a little too close for comfort. But they both take the Stargates for safety. Swiffer. He, uh, he's still trying to hang around. They don't want to just get this over for free, and Swipe is in the bottom lane, so actually the longer that Fire do not take this Baron, the better shape he's in. Swiper, he's coming up to try and help. So again, they need to retain their health bars because they can't steal this, but they have to contest it. Here comes the team fight. Saros coming in, heavy. All right, dodge the croc, Dar Swiper. He's made it past the croc. He's going to knock away Nautilus. Heavy being chased down. Tussle, he's going to take it. And Ice do not commit enough. Do they have the tools that it takes to get out alive? Well, Swiffer, he's going to put in the damage onto Saras. It's not going to be enough. Evi, he's still alive. Swiper, no swiping currently. He's moving on to Dara. And he is still alive. He's finally going to go down. Exchange for Swiper himself. A one for one trade. Swiffer, also low. Tussle. Oh no. He's putting in the auto attacks. Here comes the TP. This is going to be an angry, angry Tom Kench. He backs away. Tussle, he's down. A kill over to Victor. He's gone. Where has he reappeared? He's off to the side. He's off to the flank. He's gunning for Ice. Lands the lick onto Rosie. There's too many juicy targets for him to go for. Hereti, he backs away. Best case scenario for Ice right there. But overall, again, Japan still full in control of this game. They secure the Baron. They get the tower. And they're rubbing salt in the wound, frankly. Saros, a gorgeous flash. I don't know if you saw, but Swiper came in for the relentless charge on the wall. Saros immediately flashes it and then turns around. Almost kills Swiffer on the exit. 
Okay, let's see that one again. Carbon, puck to the face. Yeah, so uh, Carbon's dead here. The important thing is, again, that the Oceanic team is able to preserve their health bars because they know that our only option now is that we just need to poke them off or try to fight them off the Baron. We can no longer steal it. So good play from Rosie. So now we speed it up. The problem is, is that uh, Radier is stalled out. He's actually hit by the knockup from Velkaz as he approaches again. And it was a really good managing of the Baron, the fact that Tussle is strong enough to take it by himself, and they use Evie to zone him off. That flash right there. Absolutely beautiful. And Dara was the only one to pay with his life, and even then it was close. And Heretti was full health at the end. Come on, Heretti, step it up. But yeah. Evie is he just... Was, he was positioning. Like, he, he zones off all of Oceania, allows Tussle to secure the Baron, then he backs, teleports in, and starts the rest of the cleanup crew for Team Fire. Definitely all over the place, but what I can say for certain is that... Uh, all over in the right places. Yes, and Tussle's ultimate is down, as Speaking is of right place. Voyage. Carbon, he does have that one ward left, so Evie's not going to be able to get him right now. And he's going to recall on that bush. Meanwhile... Is this going to be a base race? Fire you taking can't the base race a Baron. No. <laughs> no, you cannot. And we've got the recalls coming through thick and fast. But they are not empowered. Which means that's going to be one free turret. See if Japan can translate this into even more. Again, they have so many dive potentials and tools left. They have the Nautilus ultimate as well as the arrow. So this is very capable, very tanky team. This was very easy CC to land here. Here comes the push onto the tower. The chip damage, there's very little they can do. Radier takes a chunk of damage from Seros. That is starting to burn. Evie, he's walking up. He's being the front line they need. Again, the ultimate used there by Dara to zone away. The arrow blocked there by Carbon. Ultimate comes down onto Seros. This is the opportunity that Swiper may use. He's still blocking up the damage. He's taken too much. The laser will disintegrate him. Carbon also drops there. Evi, he's going to eat off the Valkars. He's in good shape. Redemption comes down for the quick team heal. And that tower is long gone. In for the inhibitor as well. And fire, they get to do whatever they want. Japan is just all over the place. And Ice, not sure if they can recover as they are getting melted right now. Radiant caught as well by Dara. They are zoning him away. Tussle, this could be good, but no, unfortunately, Tam can't exist. Tussle will carry on to this tower. Suefa, he's doing all he can. The hero play that OCE need to keep this game alive did not pan out. And Ray Deer cannot come with the objection that he really wanted in this game. And I really wanted to say, Fire, that's the win. That's the win to Japan. Japan step up again and continue to be the consistent thorn in Oceanic's side. They seem to have found the Achilles heel, and every time, no matter what the representation, no matter what the roster, they find the wins. They really were the protagonists of this story, Frosk. I was wondering, is it Radia? Is he going to be the hero? No. No, it is definitely Evi, that guy in the top lane. Not only the fact that he got the Tom Kench, and this game really kind of solidified the cherry on top, you know, in terms of how Tom, how strong Tom Kench is, especially now that he's been added as a flex, being able to move into that top position, being able to move and be successful in that support position. But what Evie was able to do with that champion, constantly right place, right time, uh, starting the fights, zoning people off, prioritizing the objectives, teleporting back, finishing the fights, just a phenomenal performance. I mean, we, we heard this guy's the best mechanical player in Japan, and he proved it right there. I mean, he ended the game unkilled, and he outdamaged everyone else on his team outside of Velkars. In fact, he outdamaged everyone other than the mid laners as Tam Kench top lane. He went in on this game. And you know, we said that this was probably going to be a game about mid laners. You know, you got Swiffer on one side, you got Japan's Faker and Seros on the other side. Uh, and the fact that across Japan's roster that they had that that ace in the hole with mm -hmm. Evie in the top lane, the fact that he can carry from a tank position, because that's really what Tom Kinch.